I know from identifying these elements, you will be able to shift your internal state. You will can reconnect with people, you can get yourself back out there, and you can stop the isolation now and forever. G'day guys, Matt Tate again from Fork in the Road, your channel for transformation. Once again, I'm continuing on the last few exercises in the book by Steve Andreas, Transforming Yourself, Becoming Who You Want to Be. Steve Andreas, great book, and it's all about transforming your identity. Transforming who you think you are. Because when your identity shifts, you shift. Your automatic behavior shift. It's the fastest way to transformation. But we can't go at the identity straight on because the identity will fight back. We have to deconstruct it one quality at a time. And so that's what this self-concept model is all about. And so we've been through a quite an adventure through all the other videos. If you haven't seen those videos yet, go and check out the links, go and check out the other self-concept videos that I have done. Because it goes all the way through how you build your self-concept, how you can shift your self-concept, and how you can realize how much we distort, we delete, and we generalize. Well, today, I'm gonna to take you through exercise in the book uh, what is it, number, exercise 14.1, chapter 14, page 240, 240. And this one's about connecting with others. Now, last one we did was all about boundaries and how these boundaries can be so good that we don't actually allow people in, right? So we want to allow some people into our boundaries so we can connect with others, right? Because the ones you're going to connect with are going to be those who are inside your circle. Obviously, we've got different layers. Mine physically go out like this. If you saw the last video I did about my personal boundaries, my internal boundaries, also just that normal spatial boundary we have around us, who do you allow inside that boundary? Now we're going to try and connect with others. And so let's explore inside the book. Now, Steve Andreas talks about connection and disconnection. And in particular, his experience here is for you to think of two experiences you have had, just reading straight from the book, an experience of being very connected with somebody else where your boundaries were faint, they were non-existent, or very large and inclusive, where you just let this person in. And then we'll also look at an experience of being very disconnected from someone else in which your boundaries were very evident and prominent. And if you can have an example with the same person, then that would be really revealing as to when things had shifted. And so if you're thinking about an example, I could think about um, examples where I felt very connected to people. Uh, I felt very connected with my clients. Um, because there's a boundary condition of trust. I've stepped into their circle of trust and I've respected that circle of trust and as a result, I feel very connected because we're sharing things that you would not normally, normally share about your life. And so that's one place I have felt connected. A place where I've uh, felt maybe disconnected with someone else and the, let's find an example of that. Where I felt disconnected from someone else uh, you could talk about, you know, people who were you know, friends in the past and I haven't talked to for years, maybe. That would be a disconnection. Um, more a time and space thing. It wasn't necessarily anything, or well, maybe there was some boundaries that were going on internally and I hadn't realised both ways, maybe from them and from me. Or perhaps it has been, uh, let's see, disconnected from maybe family members who I haven't spoken to for years. Uh, disconnected, well there's all sorts of stuff, I mean depending on the, the context. Let's go back to the activity. So it says here, the disconnected, uh, where the boundaries were very evident and prominent. And then begin by taking five minutes to silently compare how you represent these two different experiences. And then make a written list 
of the details and there's a sub modalities list I'll go through in a moment and seeing the difference between them there will be lots of similarities but we are interested in the differences in those details as to how you've represented here and here in your system those boundaries and so it's very interesting uh, what does he say uh, make sure that you include some modalities in all three modalities visual auditory and kinesthetic okay so that's the activity and now I'm gonna go through let's choose two experiences I'd like you to choose an experience where have you felt very connected with someone that's not in the room right now it's outside of the room and the reason why we want to do that is because we want to really connect with something that's inside of us that's sitting inside your system because if the person's not in the room right now clearly you've stored it in here if the boundary is there right and so there we have the first exa example what is your first example find somewhere where you are very connected do you have that picture some person maybe it was in, you know a relationship maybe it was good friends maybe it was your mum maybe it was your dad maybe your grandma or grandpa maybe your kids very connected with your kids whatever it might be friends whoever it could be some social group where you're feeling just that energy of connection okay so I've got one now where I've I have felt that connection got it I've got one specific event where I went for a walk with a friend and that friend and I really connected on a deeper deeper level and we just seemed to be on the same page it was weird right with everything more so than usual and so if you think about that experience grab one of those for you one of those times when we were very connected and now at the same time we're now going to go off and look for an experience in your system where you see what you see hear what you hear and feel what you feel when you've felt very disconnected in the past disconnected and you just oh you know keep away from me and I've instantly got an example from someone in a training I think I've mentioned it before who got in my personal space that was in my boundary story in one of the previous videos and he got in me in my personal space and I was like oh I, I was feeling very disconnected um, and so that was an example of disconnection so as I explore this those two examples I'm now going to explore the two I've got images coming up for me they're like little movies and so as I go through those movies let's go through the list and see if you can unpack how you have stored as I go through this list right here the first one is as you access that is it an image is it a sound or is it a feeling and we're going to go through and turn all of all of them into a picture right so have a picture that represents that thing for me I, I instantly go to pictures some people don't they have sounds that are more important you can go and put those sounds into an image and notice some of these so sub modalities or you can just roll with it and then see which answers you can answer and notice the difference we're just looking for the differences here so the first one as I've got my image of the um, what's it called the, I've got my image of the connection going for a walk in a park with a friend and when I think about that that's an image just off to the left over here and it's pretty close and then I think about an image when I have felt uh, disconnected and that one's over to the right further away okay I don't know it's just what my brain's telling me and so where is it in your personal space and as you put, I've got those images sort of sitting there next to each other, one over here, one over there, disconnected, connected, as I close my eyes to access it. And I've got the disconnected over here, and what I'm noticing, it's bright, it's a bright image over here. Is it bright or dark, is the question. And the answer is bright over here, a little dimmer over there for the disconnected. So there's a difference. The next question is, is it associated or disassociated? Which means, are you seeing it through your own eyes when you access the memory? This one over here definitely is associated. This one over here... I've got a bit of both, actually. It kind of oscillates between through my own eyes and seeing myself in the scene. Interesting. The next question is, do you feel, as a 
whole body experience or just part of your body. And so as I tap into this one, I'm, it's like I'm walking and the whole body's walking along and having that experience. Over here, which is the disconnected, so connected here, disconnected as I tap into that. I'm just, I had it in my heart and then it sort of felt like I had a force field around me. <laughs> so I felt something and then force field. So that's different to whole body walking. I'm feeling the whole body is connected. The next question is color or black and white? This one over here is, is definitely color. The one over there, the disconnected is, is dimmer. It's um, not as vivid. So it's a little bit of color, but not, not as good. So there's a difference. Uh, the next question is, with, am I open or closed? Well, here I'm opening up and here I'm completely <laughs> closed off, so for sure. That's pretty obvious. Um, and as I tap into the feeling, the images, the sounds, the next question, are they soft edges or hard edges on this sensation of connection? This image over here actually has soft edges because perhaps I'm allowing things in. And over here, it's definitely a hard border, hard edge. Um, we have close and distance. I've, this one's closer over here. The other one's distant, sort of a couple of meters away over there. That's the next one. Movement or stillness. This one's a movie. I'm looking through my own eyes and I'm walking along. It's a movie. This one, I think it's a movie as well. What is that one? The one where I'm disconnected and someone's in my personal space. Yeah, I think it's a movie as well. The next one, where was I? Quiet or loud? Mm, the new one here, the, the connected one, it's just normal, not quiet, not loud. This one over here, oh, it's loud because I've probably got a voice screaming, stop, the one that's disconnecting. That seems to have a loud noise to it. Um, obviously here I'm relaxed in the new, in the, I'm feeling connected, I'm feeling relaxed, and there's a bit of tension going on in the other one where I'm disconnected, where the guy's in my space. Uh, the next one is sound or silent. Yeah, there was sound here and there was sound there as well. So there's no difference there. Smooth or staccato? Um, I'm getting smooth here and I'm getting kind of up and down over there. So not quite exactly kind of like a roughness to it maybe. Yeah, roughness. Uh, is what I get there. So smooth or rough would be a simpler way I would term it. Um, feel large and feel small. Here I'm feeling large. There, maybe because it's just further away it feels smaller. But at the time it probably felt large. So that's very interesting. Uh, this is great, this stinks is the next expression. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that was awesome actually. And over there, just get away from me. That's the words I'm saying to myself. And so you can see I've found some differences in the sub-modalities. So the modalities is what you see, what you hear, and what you feel. The sub-modalities is what you see. Color would be a detail inside that sub-modality. Um, uh, visually, I would then have maybe how far away it is from my body. That's a visual sub-modality. Sound, what direction is the sound coming from? Uh, is a sub-modality. Sound, um, what is the, uh, which side of the ear is it coming from? How loud is it? They're all details within the modality of sound, sub-modality. And then we have feelings. It might be a feeling in the body, right? And so the feeling in the body might have a location. It might have a vibration. It might have a temperature. They're the details or a sub-modality of feelings and kinesthetic, right? So these are the sub-modalities. So I've just gone through a list and we've identified the differences from when you were connected to when you were disconnected. And we're gonna use those in the future exercises to help you shift 
towards being connected more with the people around you. Just basically get yourself reconnected with people, not as isolated, and allowing some people into your world. And by starting to shift in the next activities, now we've explored that, we will get into shifting your boundaries, reconnecting with people, and just to let you know what's coming across, 14.2 coming up in the next video is mapping across from disconnection to connection. So stay tuned. Now we've got the building blocks to use your internal storage system to serve you better. This is Matt Tate from Fork in the Road. I know from identifying these elements, you will be able to shift your internal state. You will can reconnect with people, you can get yourself back out there, and you can stop the isolation now and forever. See you in the next video.